It has been a good while since I last did a video on a Vim plug, and not because I just didn't want to do them, it's more like I just didn't find anything that really caught my attention, but it's good to be back, I miss doing these videos. So today we're looking at a Vim plugin called Vim Witch Key. Now, if you've ever used Doom Emacs before, you'll know that when you press, say, the space bar, it shows you what keys you can press alongside that to actually do some sort of action. Basically, Vim Witch Key is the Vim implementation of that exact same functionality. So the way it works is very simple. If we just go and run the which key command and then pass in the key in the sequence we want to look at, let's say we're going to use our space key, for example. It's going to show us the keys we can then press after that to actually go and continue the command. Obviously, you'd want to bind this so when you press the space key, it will go and run this. But for the sake of demonstration, this is how we're going to use it. So if I was to then go and say press Q, for example, that will then go and try to quit the application. In this case, though, because there isn't a file name defined, it won't let me do that. As you may have noticed there, it doesn't just show you the commands that are actually linked to that key. It also goes and basically presses the key. So you can actually continue the key sequence from this point. Now, if you're like me and you have a lot of key combinations on things like Shift, Control, and Alt, you can't actually go and just look at all the bindings related to Alt. So this isn't a limitation with the plugin. This is a limitation with the way that Vim actually handles its bindings. So each of those individual combinations, so Control-C, Alt-X, uh, Shift-P, all of those are considered individual keys inside of Vim. So if we go and run which key and then try to look at... Alt, for example, it won't actually show us anything. Normally, you'd write Alt as just A, and as you can see, there's nothing actually there. But if we go and try that exact same thing again, but do, say, Alt M, for example, in this case, I actually do have a binding there. Now, do keep in mind that when you just run which key, this is only going to show you the key bindings you can use inside of normal mode. But if you want to go and see what you can use inside of visual mode, what you do instead is run which key visual, and the thing you pass into it is going to be exactly the same. So in this case, we're just going to run it on space again. Again, and as we can see, we have these ones right here. In my case, nothing is going to change though. Now, most of the options inside this list, when you go and press the key associated with it, it's just going to go and run the command. But you might notice this little purple option in the bottom right. So if we go and press T, this is actually going to take us into the next level of the menu. So this is going to be a key binding that requires three key presses, and this is going to continue to go until you actually run a command rather than a new submenu. Now, sometimes you might make a mistake and want to go back to the previous menu, so to do that, all you need to do is go and press backspace, and that will take you up a level. Which is certainly a nice addition to have, especially when you have these really, really long key sequences, like you'll see in something which also uses this, like Space Vim. Now, if you have the FZF plugin installed, you may think this functionality is quite similar to that. And to be honest, it actually is going to be. So if we go and run the maps command, as we can see, it shows us basically all of the key bindings that we've actually gone and set. The one difference between maps and which key though is in maps you can't actually start it with an initial search. So if I wanted to show any of the space bindings, I would then have to go and write space inside of the menu. If there is some way to include an initial search and I managed to miss it, let me know, but I tried to find it and I couldn't get anything to work. Plus, which key has the advantage where if you start pressing keys in the sequence, it will go and filter stuff rather than filtering based on what you type. If you're running a very heavily customized Vim config and the plugin isn't actually working, make sure that you haven't gone and set no timeout. Now, no timeout is going to be enabled whether you're running regular Vim or Neo Vim, and it needs to be enabled for the plugin to actually function because normally you'll run the command and then within like 300 milliseconds or within a second, whatever you go and set it to, then it will actually open up the menu. And disabling the timeout doesn't make it open up instantly, it just removes the timeout functionality and the plugin won't ever open. Now, if you want to modify the timeout, the variable you're going to modify is this one right here. So you're going to run set timeout len and then the length you want it to be set to. By default, I believe it's set to a thousand, but I prefer it to be considerably quicker than that. Now, one thing you may have noticed, which might be a little bit annoying, is when we actually go and run the which key command, it shows us 
just the command that we're running rather than some helpful name to explain what's actually being done. Now, because I went and said all this stuff myself, I do know what it actually does, but in the case of something like Space Vim, you may want to have, say, a better name that explains what's happening. So we can actually go and rename every single one of these options. Now, setting up the dictionary is really, really annoying because the documentation and the readme show two completely different things and only one of them actually works. So if we go down in the readme, down to the dictionary section, just completely ignore anything that's written here because it just doesn't matter. So what you're going to do is go over to the plugin documentation, go down to the dictionary section, and what you're going to also want to do before we actually do anything else is go add these two bindings in right here, because without these two bindings, the plugin won't actually use the dictionary. I sat here for 10 minutes trying to work out why the plugin wasn't using it, and it's because I was missing these bindings. To be fair, they are useful, and these are bindings you should actually go and set, so if I go and press space now, it will then automatically open up this menu. Also, ignore the fact that it passes in a list to set any of these. The list is completely useless. We can just go and pass in a string. So, what we need to do first up is go and define the root of the dictionary. The variable name doesn't actually matter. In my case, I'm just going to call it which key map. Now, in here, the left-hand side is going to be the key you want to set the name of. So in this case, I'm just setting it for W. And then the right-hand side is going to be the name you're assigning to it. I've just called it buffer1 just to make sure it stands out. Let's just give it a absolute nonsense name just to be 100% sure we can definitely see it. So if we go and restart vim and we go and press the space key as we can see on w down here this is the one that we just set now as we can see we can pick and choose which ones we want to set we don't have to set all of them as for doing sub menus like this one right here what you're going to do is on the variable do dot and then the key that you're actually doing a sub menu on in my case i'm going to do dot t but you might have one on say f or e or whatever other key you might have it on and then in here, there's going to be a special variable name. So to actually define the name of the menu, we're going to have the left-hand side be name. And then the right-hand side is going to be the name of the menu. Now, it doesn't have to have a plus in it. Plus is just the convention the plugin was using out of the box. And then any keys you want to define inside the submenu get done inside of this object right here. Now, you could go and do this all in this one object right here. The problem with that, though, is it gets very, very messy trying to define a JSON object like that. And then the last thing we want to do is go and register the dictionary. So if we go and run call, which underscore key, hash register, and then what key we want to register it on. In this case, I'm registering it on the space key. And then we pass in the variable we want to use. So if you want to go and set up a dictionary for alt M and control C and whatever other key bindings you want to do, you'll have to do them all one by one. There is a little bit of other configuration you can do, but it's mainly just aesthetic things like setting the whether you show the menu vertically, splitting a window at the bottom, things like that. Nothing really that crazy. Now, there is one little issue I do have with this. So, it only shows the custom key bindings you've made. I would like to have at least a toggleable option that shows me the built-in key bindings because I don't always remember the real long combinations that I need to press sometimes, and having some of those there would actually be useful. I don't think it should be the default option because Vim has a lot of key bindings and has a lot of overlapping ones, but at least as an option there would be nice to see. Technically, you could go and do it yourself by just remapping every key in Vim to the same functionality it already does and then it would show up in the menu, but that would be really annoying to do. Installing this is no different from any other plugin and like most Vim plugins, it has a little bit of documentation about how to do that. So before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. Also, I have a uh, I have a new toy, so I can go and change these very easily now with this little controller here. I'll talk about this in a future video, but for now, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Monza, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie Joseph, Mitchell Peter, the Steven Tony Tushar, and all of my two dollar supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, I've got my links down below, my subscribe star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast as well, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey. 
uh, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. I actually really like these rainbow lights, and I'm out. <laughs>